Hi, this is just a quick follow-up tutorial on this Grandma Word mini album um, that we made before. A few people uh, don't have a Silhouette machine and they want to use Silhouette Studio to still create it uh, and cut it out by hand. So, uh, those are the instructions if you're not using, these will be the instructions if you're not using a Silhouette machine. If you are using a Silhouette machine, you would turn on your registration marks um, since it's not so this is for not a silhouette machine um, we're not going to use registration marks go ahead and change it in your page window change your paper to letter or A4 um, whatever size a printer paper you're using you can change it to landscape or portrait um, I'm going to go ahead and do a landscape because we can fill in the screen better this section was for um, our chipboard set. Right now we're just going to go over how to recolor and print these either in color or in um, just black and white with an outline. So first of all let me show you how you would do it in color. Let's say we're doing uh, just a fill pattern that's available in Studio. Go ahead and open right here your fill pattern window and you can pick whatever pattern you want. Just select the letter, choose the pattern. I probably wouldn't really do this but just for simplicity I'm going to alternate pink and purple polka dots. Now you can see that these polka dots are bigger than these polka dots, that's because this shape is bigger than this shape. And so those are going to come in um, at different sizes to fill your shape. To get it back to a consistent size from letter to letter, we're going to go still in our fill pattern window, go to the advanced options down here at the bottom of the page, select the letter, right here oops I don't want a pan pattern yet okay scale pattern I've got the letter A selected I'm gonna shrink down the scale to about 50 percent looks similar I'm gonna do that with each of these just so the polka dots all look about the same size And I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Okay, that looks close enough, especially if we're going to embellish it and put pictures on it. It probably doesn't need to be really perfect. Okay, so now I have a fill pattern in each of these. I'm going to break out the letters so they will actually print on the paper. And it looks like I can fit these four letters. I will move these off my workspace. The only thing that's going to print is what's here on the work page. Um, and you should know your own printer how much of a border it gives you. Um, one of my edges I get a quarter inch of anything cut off so I want to make sure I've got enough room that it will print that so I would do one page with those letters, another page to break these out, another page or two for these letters over here. You just need to um, start notation. I'm setting it on a 12 by 12 cutting mat just so I don't get the funny border here that tells me I'm cutting without a mat. Um, just either set it to letter or 12 by 12 so you've got your full area. Um, what I would do here is actually either copy or cut them from this page and put them on this page. And again break them out again so they will actually print. 
and this one I've got room I could probably go back to some of these and put some on there. Alright, so that's if you want to use a fill pattern from that's already in Silhouette Studio. Let me really quickly show you how you could use a digital pattern paper if you already have digital papers on your computer. Just open a folder that has digital paper on it, drag that image of that JPEG or PNG file, whatever it is, and hover it over that letter until it fills it. So for this set I could use a nice um, coordinating paper that came in the same digital kit. Alright, now I don't want all of these, this is tiling my pattern. Remember on our fill pattern window, advanced options down at the bottom, we had scaled this down. We want to go back up to 100% change where the paper lies. So with this, click on pan pattern, this little four pointed arrow shows up. Drag that around until you get the part of your pattern paper that you like. I'm going to increase the scale on this one. Click pan pattern and get some of those pretty flowers back in there also. And again, and remember to change your scale. So they're consistent if you think that's going to bother you. Okay, now you could actually print these now and have your digital paper in those letters. One thing I'll mention, if you're putting a lot of digital papers into your letters to fill them, suddenly the file size is getting really large and it's harder for Studio to handle it. So I would save often and definitely break them up into separate pages so you don't have 12 letters all with a huge digital image in it. Um, so just remember you can start a new page whenever you want to break things up a little bit. Okay, for actually printing these, you would go up here to your printer icon, click on it, go to Preferences, and depending on your printer, your little printer box, dialog box, will look different than mine. Um, but what you want to look for is right here, your orientation. If you're work page in studio is landscape orientation you want your printer to also be printing in landscape orientation alright and then you would just click print and you would do that with each page that you need to now let me tell you if you want to do these just an outline and maybe print on your own just an outline for tracing or for there's there's two ways you could do it. You could print an outline directly on your white paper, cut it out, stick it to your pattern paper and use it so you don't have any lines to erase. Uh, the other thing you could do is print this directly onto your pattern paper if you can cut it the right size and feed it into your printer. Um, once we change these to an outline. So what we're going to do either in the fill window or the fill pattern window, you want to change these to an empty fill. So all you have is the outline. Right now, the printer will not print any line colors. If you want lines to show up for an outline, you need to do this one little trick of going to your line style window and this very bottom box here, check the box with the one select the shape selected, choose print lines of selected shapes. So you have to tell the printer that you want the line color to print. So here it would print red. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my line color window, change it to black, 
Now here it would put print black. And you need to remember to check that little box for print lines of selected shapes in each on each of your pages. So I would change these all to a blank fill, change my line color to black, and then with those selected, make sure you check the box for print lines of selected shapes. Now with a line thickness of zero, it's only going to show up as a very, very thin hairline print. If you want to really be able to see it, you're going to need to go to at least 0 0.50 points line thickness, and you can see you can get it pretty thick. Um, but again, those lines will not print at all until you check this print lines of selected shapes. So I usually keep mine down between a half an inch and an inch, or between half a point and one point. Okay, so you are ready. You can again make sure your preferences are set on your printer. So if you have your page in landscape mode, that it's going to print landscape, and if it's a portrait, that it'll print portrait. Um, hopefully, that covered everything for you. If you're new to working with Silhouette Studio and want to be able to print something with here with this after you've designed it, the key to remember is if you want the line color to show up you check this box here in your line style window for print lines of selected shapes. So if you have any questions, please let me know.